All right, so we are joined today by the 80th Miss Jackson State University, uh, native of Charlotte Amale Virgin Islands, Delta Sigma Theta marketing expert, you name it, just a resume that we'll put up against anybody. Here joining our college career readiness class at Velma Jackson High School, and we are also recording this for our friends at Ridgeland High School, Germantown High School, Madison Central High School, and our YouTube channel. So thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, wow. What a great introduction. Thank you for having me today. Yeah. And you uh, uh, were the 80th, uh, 80th Miss Jackson State. But before we get to any of that, um, and we're going to set the record straight because you are from Charlotte Amale, uh, U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, so just so uh, our young people understand, the Virgin Islands are part of the United States. Uh, it is not a state, but it is you are an American. You don't need a passport to come here. You can spend American money in the Virgin Islands. It's one of the most beautiful places on the planet Earth, and it is 100 percent American soil. Right. We are a U.S. territory, so we're owned by the U.S. Um, everything is U.S. based, so U.S. currency, meaning we have the U.S. dollar. Um, so, uh, we have a few of the U.S. franchises, so we have McDonald's, KFC. Um, we've had in the past like Burger King and that sort of thing, so very familiar. Um, but it's coupled with, you know, the things that you can only find in the Caribbean, so that beautiful blue water and white sandy beaches. And um, I also I kind of prepare like a little short um, oh, sure, sure. where I do have like a map just to give a uh, reference to how far it is or how close yeah. it is from here. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, you're able to show your screen. Go ahead. Yes. Okay, hold on. Let me make sure everything is together. Um, I don't even have to introduce myself because you already did such a tremendous job of doing so. Um, but for the sake of my presentation, you know, um, I do have like a slide here where I just talk about things that I've done. Um, so how do I go? Oh. Here? Okay, so a little bit about me. I recently got my master's at Georgetown. Wow. Um, so I graduated in December with my master's of professional studies in integrated marketing communication. So all things marketing is my jam. Um, as you know, I was Miss Jackson State 2019-2020, Delta Pi initiate of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Like you said, born and raised on St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. The capital is called Charlotte Amali. Um, got my bachelor's of business uh, administration from Jackson State University, class of 2020. Um little fun fact that I love to throw out there, I had the opportunity as a sophomore, the summer of my sophomore year, to intern on Capitol Hill wow. with my congresswoman, um, Stacey Plaskett. So that was an amazing experience that I literally, it was only for a month, um, but I've been able to carry the things that I learned within that month literally throughout every single day of my life. Yeah, and um, I forgot to mention that as well because the Virgin Islands has representatives in the U.S. Capitol. So that also makes them part of the United States. So I forgot to mention that. I'm glad you said that. Yes, we have a rep and she's amazing. She's been working so hard to make sure that we have a voice up there. And um, we I appreciate her so much. She's a very, very close mentor to me. Awesome. Um, another fun fact, I definitely have 40 type hair for all my naturalistas. And I am a Capricorn. My birthday is January 9th. Uh, so yes, so we were talking about the Virgin Islands. Um, so we're here, Jackson, or we fly to Jackson, and I'm going all the way over here to St. Thomas. Um, may, mainly like a six hour flight. Um, that's what it says online, but um, truthfully, once I get from here to maybe like Atlanta and then Atlanta to St. Thomas, that's a straight flight, and I can get there within about four or five hours or so. Yeah, so that is my spill on geographically where we are. Um, and I know you wanted to, well, before I go into that, more about me. Um, things that I currently struggle with as a person. I have really bad anxiety and I'm trying to figure out ways around it, even with all the things that I've done. Um, I've been battling that the entire time. Uh, things that I used to struggle with that I can probably say I don't struggle with anymore is appreciating the skin that I'm in. Um, so that's been 
a struggle, but now I'm very confident in how I look, my my complexion and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I do have a valuable lesson that I learned at age 25, or I've learned so many valuable lessons, but this came to mind first. And it was just more so to understand that everyone's figuring it out. You know, it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter who you are, or what you've done. Everyone, even though they might put on a front that they've got it together, we're still figuring it out. So please remember that like throughout the entire time that I'm speaking today. Absolutely. With that, be kind to yourself and be kind to others. So we can pause and kind of talk a little bit here. Um, um, now, now, one thing that I wanted to ask about, because I just found this out about you, is going to Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. So I, and I always ask this to people that go to a PWI and an HBCU, because I think they both offer great opportunities education-wise, but they offer different opportunities education-wise. So I've known people to go PWI undergrad, HBCU grad school, and vice versa. So what made you decide to go HBCU undergrad and then PWI and our Catholic PWI at that um, <laughs> for grad school. Oh, wow. Yeah. So for me, I did not have a true preference either times. So coming to Jackson State was more so just kind of like a leap of faith based off of opportunity. I um, initially, so backstory about even how I got to Jackson State, when I was in high school, I used to be a part of the music department Ooh. and we were strongly encouraged to audition for schools that would come to town and recruit. And so that's initially where I met Jackson State faculty. And that's where I had the opportunity to like audition for the music program. And that's how I found out about Jackson State. So wow. um, after that, they did offer scholarships to everyone that um, auditioned. And I was actually the only person that year that decided to come and check it out. Um, but I knew that I did not want to pursue music professionally. I knew I wanted it to be a part of my life. So once I got to Jackson State, I... Um, enrolled in the College of Business, and then I did like some music classes. So I was in the choir, vocal jazz, that sort of thing to kind of um, feel that love that I have. Um, but coming to Jackson State was solely a leap of faith, and staying there was a decision that was made off of the energy I felt. Wow. Um, that energy is unmatched. And so I take that pride and everything that I've learned, whether it was in the classroom and outside of the classroom, and really just helped me to shape what I want out of life. And so the opportunity to go to Georgetown wasn't in any way to contrast my 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 opportunity my experiences. At least initially, it wasn't. It was really just um the fact that I wanted to move to DC initially, and I just wanted to take advantage of whatever was there in DC. And so Georgetown was probably the one school that I did end up completing my application for, um, but I did end up attending virtually. So um, and with that being said, if I can refer to the differences, um, I'd say that you can clearly see the funding is, di is different. Um, and obviously Georgetown has so many support supporting funding opportunities that you can see the difference in how they kind of just how they maneuver um it, it's quick it's a quick process to enroll and to get your your semester going and refunds is quick and you know just it's interesting to see that um and in no way shape or form am I saying that my experience at Jackson State was any less but it's just an interesting um change of pace and I really can appreciate um both yeah. strengths and weaknesses from both experiences absolutely yeah. um and you also made a, a good point as well about you know we have a lot of kids that'll watch this later or watching it now and Maybe they are involved in music because, you know, Germantown, Madison Central, Ridgeland, and even here at Velma Jackson, we have great music programs. You can get a scholarship uh, at Jackson State or any university without being a music major, still be able to perform, be able to network and be a part of student organizations because these departments at these universities are always looking for musicians. Uh, and also my friend Mark Henderson over at Jackson State with the drama department with Mad Drama, he's always looking for people to come be a part of that. They don't have to be drama majors and that's scholarship opportunity. 
Exactly. I love Dr. Henderson. And I think that's my only regret at Jackson State not becoming a part of Mad Drama because I love Mad Drama performance troop. Um, but yeah, I definitely still got a scholarship. It wasn't a full scholarship, but it was a partial just to participate in the music department while I was getting my business degree. So for sure, take advantage of that. Absolutely. So I I'll let you go ahead with the presentation. I just wanted to ask about that because I thought it was so uh, so, thought it was so interesting. Yes, I appreciate both experiences fully. Um, here, I kind of just wanted to point out some scholarship opportunities randomly. Um, I know when I was heading off to college or even in college, um, I it's so many of them out there, but it's hard to kind of focus to apply. Um, so I thought it would be cool to just show these um, for anyone that might be interested in applying. Um, so yeah. <laughs> um, also, I didn't really see a lot of opportunities for like marketing, sales, scholarships when I was um, coming into school. So if you're interested in sales, marketing, especially MetLife Foundation Scholarship, check into it. Um, all three of these are available every year. Wow. Um, so check them out. Um, I just learned about that last one, the Young Women in Public Affairs Award. Um, they seem to give out a lot of scholarships in that amount so check it out and I hope someone that is viewing is a scholarship recipient of at least one of these yeah because so much scholarship money goes unclaimed every year every year and I'm so sick of hearing that <laughs> I want us to take and these are specifically I looked them up specifically to make sure that people students that were in Mississippi were eligible for these so that's also a, a factor here um so Hopefully somebody screenshots that. And here is just for questions and comments. I know we can continue to talk about college and, and choices and that sort of thing. Yeah, and I have some, I got some questions from the students, but I have I have some for you as well. Um, now, uh, one thing you didn't mention, and I, I know you mentioned it briefly, um, you're a member of Delta Sigma Theta, and we have a lot of kids interested in MPHC or at the Ole Miss Mississippi State, the IFC and PC programs as far as group organizations. And they are a lot of fun, but I think a big misnomer and a big misconception is that it's just the strutting and strolling and wearing the colors. And even though all that's fun, because you know, I've been to a couple of step shows in my day and they are so much fun. But that is just a small fraction of, of, of Greek organizations. Um, there is a lot, as far as um, just from what I know, uh, very strict academic requirements and a very, very big service, on, a very big emphasis on community service. So talk a little bit about the uh, the MPAC experience you had as a Delta Sigma Theta. For sure. So you hit the nail on the head. Um, the wearing the letters and strolling um that is just a tiny portion of what we do and what we stand for we believe in service we believe in sisterhood we believe in scholarship and so um i think the greatest way to describe especially like my experience coming into the sorority as a um undergrad student it was to handle your business you know handle your your you know your devotion to the community, to yourself, to advancement. And then, you know, you can always like enjoy your time, fellowship, you know, but you have to be able to balance both. Like that's a lifelong journey of a, of a task. You must be able to balance both. And, and oftentimes people gravitate to the fun looking parts of anything, um, but know that it's coupled with a lot of hard work and dedication behind of it always with everything <laughs> yeah, because because once guys get my age I, I love messing with uh some of the mpac members that are my age and they're trying to still step in their 40s and i'm like you're gonna get injured so you know the uh the stepping doesn't last forever uh, even though it's fun when you're in your 20s um that is just such a small portion of all the great work these mpac and uh even the ifc and pc organizations do it is such a uh uh uh, uh a misnomer of, of what all, all goes on. Now, something I, I've been I've been wanting to ask too is you became Miss Jackson State and made national headlines. You were in Ebony Magazine. You were uh, in all type in stuff in the Caribbean as well because uh, because of your Caribbean heritage. Um, but you were also Miss Jackson State while COVID hit. Um, so, uh, first of all, tell us what can what really drove you to even pursue becoming Miss Jackson State, and how that one year reign really defined you because that was such a huge time not only in our country but there at the university. For sure. So, I 
I've always been interested in pageantry. Like when I was growing up, I, when I was in high school specifically, I, I vied for Miss USVI Talented Teen. Um, I placed first runner up and that was mainly like a talent based um, pageant. And so that part, like the pageantry of it, I will always be gravitated to things like that because it's my, it's, it's something I'm interested in. Um, but once I got to Jackson State and I really got immersed in the culture and felt the warmth of the environment. I fell in love with the people. I also um, saw the opportunity to see Miss Jackson State at the time, which was Destiny Lawrence. And all of those things kind of encouraged me to have that aspiration. So as a freshman, I saw the opportunity for many reasons. Um, and so continuing to pursue that looked like becoming involved and taking advantage of everything, as many things as I could get my hands on with Jackson State. So that included student government. I joined the African Dance Ensemble. Um, I was in the JSU Global, which was for the international students. So even though I'm not international, I just kind of gravitated to them. Um, and so just like I mentioned, choir and and attending events for the music department and um just every I just was bleeding out of my ears, Jackson State, um because I just fell in love. So that love led me to vibe for the title of Miss Jackson State. That's mainly it. Um, wanting to be to give back to a school that gave so much to me, gave me such a great platform before the crown. You know, I I just had that love and. Um, I was just encouraged. It wasn't a, a platform that I heard people. Sometimes you you want to hear other people say you should do it. Um, I didn't hear that before. And so that I, I wouldn't say it discouraged me, but it did discourage me a little bit because I'm like, why isn't anyone saying that I they can see me as Miss Jackson State? But um, I just kind of focused on the fact that I had that desire and that I wanted to give back to my university. And I trusted my faith. And um, next thing I knew, I was at the interest meeting. And then we were at the pageant. And then it was campaign season. And here I am. <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, and, I, and you mentioned something there um, also. And I love I loved to hit this because, um, one, and I know these kids get so sick of me saying this, but one thing I will always stand by is that historically black does not mean exclusively black. The international population of Jackson State is absolutely incredible. Um, and I'm actually friends with Lou Fat Raman as well, who was the head of the International Student Organization from Bangladesh. Um, and there was a very large uh, uh, Indian and uh, Asian population there on, on the campus. Um, and, and and she just said about how it was great for them as well to experience American culture. So it really, they, you know, there's people there that you would probably never meet anywhere else if you did not go to school there. Exactly. It's it's a, a melting pot, truly. And you might see them more in the um, athletics department, um, but that just means you have to go and support the athletics as often as you can. So I used to attend like um, some of the baseball, um, some of the baseball and the soccer team, the coaches from Europe, I yeah. think from England. Uh, so yeah. he recruits a lot of European girls and Australian girls to come play soccer there. And even tennis, um, the coach, she's from the Virgin Islands as well. Yeah, and the other coaches from Argentina. So they got a lot of South American tennis players. Right. So honestly, it, you can see it. There's so much um, variety and diversity on Jackson State's campus. Of course, we are an HBCU, um, but it's it's literally something for everyone there. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, I like to say, you know, I know you were Judge of Theta, but you don't have to be Greek to get a great college experience. There really is something for everybody. And what we've heard from uh, other Jackson State people is that you can find a way to create something, that there's something that you want to see happen in the community or, uh, uh, or, or socially. Now, before I get to the students' questions, we got to talk about marketing, um, because I'm a big believer that marketing and sales might be the most underappreciated skill that high school students learn because even if you don't have a marketing degree, you've got to have marketing skills. You got to have sales skills. You can't just be stuck in your phone. You got to be able to talk to people. You got to be able to sell products. You got to be able to sell yourself. Even if you're going to be a, a, a cosmetologist and we got a young lady here that wants to do hair. Um, you got to be able to talk to a customer about how you're going to make them look better. You got to talk to a customer about how much it costs. You can't be shy about things. So um, talk a little bit about, you know, the, the marketing skills that you see people need and also um, why marketing is so important in American business. Yes. So marketing 
especially in this day and age, I think it it almost comes second nature to this age group um, without even noticing where we're seeing everyone, you know, trying to create a social media presence specifically. And that requires marketing. You kind of have to stand out in some way in order to get noticed, to get likes, to get follows, followers. And so um, it's, it's so natural. Um, and I think that everyone should take advantage of how easy um, creators are making it to create content, taking advantage of the different tools like Canva that help you to bring that dream to life to help promote you. So you don't have to be the most um, skilled at marketing. You don't have to go to school for any of this, but to have basic knowledge of how to use certain things types of words that would grab people's attention. I think it's so important to take advantage of like YouTube um, reels that talk about how to do this because you need it regardless of what you want to do. Yeah. And, and, uh, and you've been on some pretty big marketing campaigns. And one thing about marketing is that it, I had a marketing guest yesterday in a different class that she's worked at a bank and she's worked at a restaurant. She does not have a finance background and she does not have a food background, but both of those businesses needed marketing professionals because it's always going to take that human touch to draw in people to be customers. Um, so, you know, uh, what are some areas that you see really are looking for marketing professionals right now? Um, Everyone. I think everyone, I, I'd i say it like this, um, from the small businesses to the, the corporate, the huge companies of Fortune 500 and, and up companies, everyone's looking for marketers. I think that, especially in the space that I'm in, a lot of nonprofit organizations could really use someone to help with their um, nonprofit with their efforts on um, promoting causes that they stand for and, you know, just putting on a platform or putting on a pedestal the things that they're doing for the community. So I think um, not necessarily a specific industry because all industries need them, need marketers. But um, I think for me, near and dear to my heart are um, nonprofit organizations. Yeah. And, and, and this is cool. We actually have a digital media Academy here on campus at Velma Jackson. What? Stuff. Yeah, we'd love to have you come out and work with them. Uh, so, and they also have one at Madison Central, and they have a, a digital media program in our uh, career center as well over by Germantown. So, there's a lot of skills that these kids can learn in high school that can get them into marketing right out of high school. Wow, I am blown away. <laughs> I don't know and how Jeff. good they got it. Um, but I some questions from the students, and these are all juniors. Okay. Uh, the first one is uh, Solaria Chesser. Um, she's actually a part of that digital media academy. But she's wanting to go into accounting, but she's got a question here. It says, what did you find interesting about marketing and what made you pick that as a major? And was there ever anything that almost made you change your mind? Oh, yes, for sure, for sure, for sure. So I came to Jackson City as more so like a business, well, like a general business um, major. And I did not feel comfortable with just having a general um, degree. Um, so I kind of just tapped into things that I found myself enjoying. Um, that came from uh, running campaigns when I was trying to become, so I did sophomore class business manager. That was the first like official campaign that I um, ran for. And so just taking into account that I enjoyed that experience. I enjoyed trying to create the videos and that sort of thing. So acknowledging that and um, keep continuing to pursue opportunities that caused me to create um, like marketing um, items, those things and honing into my appreciation or my happiness that came from doing those things led me to say, maybe I should try to transition to the marketing department. And so I, once I got there, I was so unsure because for one, I didn't want my transition to cause me to um, have to stay in college later. I, I didn't want that. Um, and then two, I just wasn't sure, but I kept pursuing opportunities. Actually, to this day, I'm pursuing opportunities to kind of validate my marketing um, efforts, even with my master's, I'm still pursuing ways that can like literally confirm that this is for me. You know, I've never stopped doing that. So just acknowledging my, my appreciation and my happiness that came with marketing efforts led me to pursuing a career and a life in marketing. That's awesome. Uh, now, 
Now, this is Danoa Thompson. Uh, and since you were open about your anxiety, he has a question about that. He he asked, uh, did your anxiety change coming from the Virgin Islands to the mainland? And then how did becoming Miss Jackson State affect your anxiety? Oh, what a great question. <laughs> um, So prior to coming to college, I don't think I really acknowledged the anxiety that I experienced for what it is. Um, I just thought I was just nervous or shy. Um, and so that was what I thought until coming to college. I think I got exposed to spaces where it was openly discussed. Yeah. And so that's when I was uh, really, my eyes really opened to the fact that maybe I did struggle with this. Um, and of course, the more that, and I think the biggest problem for me, um, as somebody that likes to pursue opportunities, I always battle with the repercussions that my anxiety kicks in, when my anxiety kicks in. And so every time I tried something new, every time I try something new um, or something that I've done before, when I used to perform, um, I, I play the piano as well. Oh, so cool. I used to perform in church all the time and every single time I would be anxious. I would sing every single time. You know, so at some point you kind of have to, decide what's more important to feed into your anxiety or to make sure that you put your best foot forward in whatever you aspire to do you know it's one of those things where you have to tell your bully or a challenge like no my desire is greater than whatever this is whatever obstacle this is and having that drive and that desire be so strong you can literally keep doing whatever you desire to do um, in spite of it. Um, but of course, um, I have to acknowledge the fact that I do go to counseling because I it's it's something that I battle with. So I try to treat it um, by speaking to someone professional that can help me work through my thoughts and why I understand my triggers um, so that I can try to minimize it as much as possible. Yeah. And, and, and if you were uh, in students at Jackson State also have access to mental health care, um, because, you know, the stigma of, of mental health issues has decreased, has, has increasingly dropped. And I know uh, pretty much any state university or even the community colleges are going to have mental health professionals to help with people that may struggle with anxiety because uh, you are not the only, you, you know this, you are not the only person um, that has dealt with that. So many people do. And being open about it only helps more people open up about it themselves and really help themselves. And the universities do a great job of having having professionals for college students. Speaking of, I actually spend a lot of time in the Latasha Norman Center at Jackson State. I'm very close to my counselor that I had when I was Miss Jackson State still, and I check in with her um, because it's such a valuable tool that's free and um, necessary. So I, I support it completely. I agree. Um, this is Anarian Mayfield, and he asked, what was the number one thing you took away from being your uh, from your experience of being Miss Jackson State? Um, that your uh, your efforts will follow you for the rest of your life or whatever you do, um, especially as someone in that light will follow you for the rest of your life. So if you make light of the opportunity to be SGA president, Ms. Jackson State, Campus Activities Board, um, and you do a great job at networking, you know, you kind of set that foundation. If, if you set it in a way that's solid, meaning you make meaningful connections, it will literally set you up for the rest of your life. Um, I have people that I meet today that still try to, that still for one, call me Ms. Jackson State, um, and two, kind of like you like you did, um, re reminded me of things that they you've heard that I've done or seen. And it's been a few years, you know, not that long, but just that's just an example of how things really follow. Um, say I did not kind of carry myself in a positive light at that time, that will also follow me for the rest of my life. So just that footprint, how how concrete it is and how you can take advantage, like how an opportunity like that can set you up for life was probably one of the biggest lessons that I learned. Yeah, and and that's actually a great segue into this next question. Uh, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is Harmony Williams, and she asked, what was the number one thing that has kept you motivated on your journey of achievement? Oh, uh, I think the number one thing is 
maybe like family. Um, so one thing I really attribute my ability to keep going to is um, the fact that I did have a little brother. He passed away um, when I was very young. I was about to turn 11. Yes, I was about to turn 11. And we actually had the same birthday. Um, so we were three days prior to our celebrating our birthday. And was I about to turn 11? either way um and he passed away and so but while he was on earth he was about to turn three at the time um so while he was on earth I remember the way that he looked at me the way that he thought I was just the best person it, it just felt like he looked at me as if I was the best person in the world that I could do anything and just that visual that just seeing him I see it all the time in my head and so whenever I feel unmotivated, I might pick up a picture, I might look through a, like a picture book and videos and kind of just allow that to motivate me. Of course, it causes sadness, um, but it, it is such a great, it's a, such a great motivator. I even wrote an essay about him and how like life changed in a blink of, of an eye um, in high school and how I used that sad experience, a sad time in my life to motivate me um, to keep going. Um, so yeah, I, I attribute that and my family and, and, and making my mom proud and the, the dream that I have of providing for her and my dad um, in the future. So things that are near and dear to me, like my brother, my entire family, they motivate me hundred percent of the time. Yeah, I love reading the story about when you were Miss Jackson State and she flew to Jackson to surprise you. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> yes, I was so shocked. <laughs> yeah, because that's tough to keep a secret. Uh, this is Peter <laughs> Johnson, and he asks: Has ever has being from the Virgin Islands ever made people look at you differently as a student or as a professional? Yeah, um, I say more so as a student in 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 the fact that. I just wasn't from Jackson. Um, it wasn't, it's not necessarily the norm to meet someone from the Virgin Islands here. And so it was, it didn't make it difficult per se, um, but just the social aspect. Um, most times when I introduce myself to people, um, they've never heard of the Virgin Islands. Um, my accent is not as strong as they might think someone from the Caribbean was that, like just kind of those stigmas and so um you know just having to navigate that a lot of times sometimes you get ign ignorant questions um but other times you get people that just generally don't know and so I've never had an issue with educating and and you know just sharing who I am and where I'm from with anyone that wants to know so yeah and that's why you know when we started I had to set the record straight it's not <laughs> another country um and and jokingly you know i was telling the kids that you were from uh the virgin islands and one of them was like oh isn't that where rihanna's from and i'm like <laughs> no yes yes so i get stuff like that all the time or or people say yeah i have a family member from the virgin islands and then i would say oh which which island and then they might say barbados or trinidad and <laughs> i would say well that's in the caribbean but not in the virgin islands so i, I generally never really take offense of course if, if someone's being deliberately rude then that's a different thing but people just don't know <laughs> I just got one more from the students. This is Carl Wilson. He's also part of our Digital Media Academy here. And he asks, what is your biggest life motto? Um, I feel like I have a few. Um, but maybe, and I think I put it in there too, um, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. Life is hard and everyone's battling something everyone um and even though sometimes you might feel like your battle is harder than someone else's um in those times I think it's important to you know deal with that but also to like understand that the energy that you put out always comes back to you it may not come back in the way that you might think it looked like but um positive energy so um it, it solicits positive energy in return so just understanding that and understanding that I can I can truly control my life by living by that um is very near and dear to my heart 
That's awesome. Now we're almost out of time and, and we thank you so much for taking some time for us today. Um, just so incredible. I mean, and you left out some amazing things that you've done because I know you, you traveled all over the country doing some big stuff, but uh, before we go, um, you know, let these young people know that, you know, you came from not even the mainland United States and came to Jackson state and you're not much older than they are and you're doing some incredible things and it was possible for you. So what can these kids do now because, you, you know, because you, you said yourself, you can't believe they have a digital media academy right here in high school. <laughs> they have things that you they have things that you didn't have, but yet you still are just going to the stars. So what can they do to follow in the footsteps of people like you that have become so successful? Network, um, even if you don't think you'll need something from someone like I've met I've met so many people and my first thing to them would say, I don't know why I've met you, but I'm going to take your number and I think I will need you sometimes. So, you know, and, and that has helped me literally like maybe two years after meeting them, like reconnecting, like, hey, do you still do this? Literally, the the information that you're getting, it may not make sense to you right now. OK, I promise. Um, It, it reminds me of starting a new job. All the information they're feeding you, you might not understand it right then and there, but take your notes, you know, write down some sources because you're going to need to look back at that later when life hits and, and cert certain circumstances um come to fruition. You're going to appreciate that later on. So network, take that advice. Um, don't shun anything that you think doesn't apply to you because you never know where life will take you. You never know what you'll need. Yeah, and I, and with networking, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. Exactly, exactly. I didn't tell, we, we just met for the first time today. I didn't tell you anything about me, Um, but we networked. We, we've learned so much about each other prior to this. And what if I had a bunch of negative things about me online? <laughs> you would have known and I probably would not have been here today, you know, so just positive networking, be yourself and um especially be yourself because that, keeps you grounded and it keeps you from making um decisions that you might regret in the future absolutely well again just incre uh just incredible what all you've done and are still doing just an, an incredible story and you're just so humble um uh because you could you could go on for days about your resume i'll put it up against anybody but we thank you so much for joining us nasa lynch the 19 the 2019 2020 miss jackson state all the way from charlotte amali virgin islands now here in ridgeland mississippi thank you so much for taking some time for us today Thank you for your time. All right. Talk to you soon, buddy. Thank you. Talk to you soon. See ya.